This is the story of Spicejet Flight 256. On the 5th of January 2014, a Spicejet 737 was to fly from Delhi to Goa and then back to Delhi again. On the ground at Goa, the pilots of Flight 256 was given a computerized flight plan and the weather at their destination, Delhi. The plane was planned to land at Delhi at about 6.15 p.m., and the weather was supposed to be okay. The visibility at the time of their arrival was estimated to be 200 meters or 650 feet. If they couldn't land at Delhi, then they had Lucknow and Jaipur as their alternates. Now, those airports were relatively close by. As they fuel the 737, they put 9.5 tons of fuel in, of which 500 kilos or 1,100 pounds of fuel was meant for holding over Delhi, if they needed to. But with Delhi being notorious for its smog, the captain decided to add another 300 kilos or 661 pounds of fuel to the plane. The plane took off and made its way to Delhi. When they were 50 nautical miles from the city of Delhi, things were not looking good for the pilots of Flight 256. The traffic around Delhi was and is nasty. That, combined with worse than usual visibility, meant that there was a long list of planes waiting to land. Flight 256 was 13th in line. Oh boy. As they approached the entry point to the star, or the standard terminal arrival route, ATC asked the pilots to do two orbits. At this point, they had 3.4 tons, or 7,600 pounds of fuel remaining. As the jet got closer and closer to Delhi, the pilots kept a close watch on the visibility. The reported RVR was at first 1,150 meters, or 3,700 feet. But that dropped to less than half to 550 meters, or 1,800 feet, very quickly. Things were getting bad. For example, the rollout RVR, or the distance that the pilot can expect to see at the far end of the runway, had dropped to just 50 meters, or 150 feet. This was way too low, and so the pilots of Flight 256 decided to stay at 7,000 feet, hoping that the weather would improve. This meant that they'd have to burn a bit more fuel, but it would be worth it if the visibility improved, allowing them to land at Delhi. But that did not happen. Instead, the visibility at Delhi got even worse. The pilots now had a decision to make. They could wait around and see the weather around Delhi improved, or they could divert. At this time, the Spicejet 737 had 3,100 kilos or 6,800 pounds of fuel remaining. They needed at least 2,700 kilos of fuel to get to Jaipur, their alternate. But the pilots found that just getting in contact with Jaipur was a tough task, as most of the planes around Delhi were having the same idea as Flight 256. They too were diverting to Jaipur. But once they had set things up, they flew to Jaipur, and on their way, they prepped for the landing at Jaipur. On their way there, they looked at the possibility of diverting to either Ahmedabad or Lucknow. If the visibility at Jaipur dropped, they needed a plan B. But running the numbers revealed something scary. They had no other choice but to land at Jaipur. Both Ahmedabad and Lucknow were now unreachable with the amount of fuel that they had on board. They had to make this landing count. The pilots decided to make a dual-channel auto land. This meant that the plane would basically fly itself down to the runway, even if the visibility was bad. Now, this was a solid plan. Under extreme circumstances, the pilots are allowed to do this. But as the pilots approached Jaipur, there were two planes ahead of them in the queue. One of the planes decided to divert to Ahmedabad, and the other one, an Air India A320, decided to land at Jaipur. Once the A320 landed, the Spicejet 737 was good. But then the unthinkable happened. The pilots of the A320 ahead of the Spicejet made some very bad decisions, and they stuffed the landing and ended up blocking the runway. Now, this wasn't some small runway excursion. This was a major accident. The plane had gone off the runway, sliced through a bunch of trees, parts of the plane were strewn around the runway, like, this accident has its own report, and everything in that report could be a video of its own. If you want a video on that, like this video and let me know in the comments. It will let me know what kind of videos you guys like. But this crash meant that the crew of Flight 256 had nowhere to go. They were just 5 nautical miles from landing, and now they were being forced to go around. Their one option was now blocked by an A320 that had had an accident 
and the weather at Delhi was still horrible. When the 737 went around, the plane had 1.7 tons of fuel left. The captain now used the authority that he had to head back to Delhi, weather be damned. They had no other choice. Jaipur was blocked. Ahmedabad and Lucknow were all out of range. Delhi was their only option. Once the plane was in contact with Delhi ATC, the low fuel warnings came on. The captain declared a mayday. They barely had any fuel remaining, and the pilots requested a straight-in approach to runway 28, the shortest one they had. The pilots did not care about the visibility or the weather anymore. They were going to land at Delhi no matter the cost. I mean, the alternative is to crash into the city of Delhi. I cannot imagine the stress that the pilots must have felt at this stage. They had less than a ton of fuel remaining, and if they had to go around, I don't think they'd have enough fuel for attempt number two. It would not be an exaggeration to say that they were running on fumes. As the 737 cut through the fog and smog of Delhi, the pilots probably held their breaths waiting for the runway to appear in front of them. And eventually, it did. The lights of the runway came out of the gloom to meet them, and the plane touched down safely. They had barely made it. When the pilots shut the engine down, they had 150 kilos or 330 pounds of fuel on board. To put that into perspective, you couldn't even taxi from the gate to the runway at most major airports in the world, including Delhi. That tiny amount of fuel probably would not have been enough to carry out a go-around, and they probably would have ran out of fuel. It is absolutely amazing that all of the 182 people on board were able to walk away from this incident because they were so, so close to disaster. This really was an unforeseeable situation. I mean, who thinks about diverting from your alternate because the plane in front of you might crash? These pilots were dealt a bad hand, but they were able to power through it and make it work. So, why did this happen? The first factor in this accident was the location of their destination. In addition to being one of the busiest airports in the world, Delhi also has some of the worst fog and smog. To that point, airlines that fly into Delhi have to have a fog plan submitted to the Aviation Authority of India. According to this plan, airlines that wanted to fly into New Delhi had to have at least one Cat 3 rated pilot on board. In addition to that, the airplane also had to be Cat 3 rated. Now, for those of you that don't know, ILS approaches are broadly categorized into Cat 1, Cat 2, and Cat 3. Each one is more precise than the last. For example, if you're flying a Cat 3C approach, you can basically land in zero visibility. Compared to that, Cat 1 is archaic, with a minimum descent altitude of at least 200 feet, and you needed more than half a statute mile of visibility. What this means is that if you're flying in a deli, you should expect delays and diversions because the weather is just that bad sometimes. And this happens year after year. This is what the crew of Flight 256 were flying into. The crew was holding around Delhi for 26 minutes. At this time, they checked the weather at Jaipur and the visibility at Jaipur was 900 meters, reducing to 800 meters. Now, this was on the fence for Jaipur, visibility-wise. But the pilots and the flight dispatch decided to go there anyway. We'll talk about that a little later. At this point in the flight, Lucknow was well within range of the plane, but the pilots didn't even check the weather at Lucknow. This is because Jaipur is the primary diversion airport for Delhi, because it is so close, and operationally and fuel-saving wise, it makes a lot more sense to go to Jaipur than to Lucknow. But Jaipur had a few problems of its own. The RVR measuring system at Jaipur was not calibrated. Now, the RVR, or the runway visual range, is the distance that the pilot can see down the runway at a particular point on the runway. You can see why this is very important in low visibility operations. So the pilots were being given RVR values from an uncalibrated sensor. On top of that, the airport at Jaipur was not issuing weather trends. A trend is what it sounds like. It tells pilots how the weather is going to change for a certain period of time. That's all well and good. But this is where the airline took a massive gamble. Just because Jaipur was in issuing trends did not mean that the airline and the pilots were completely in the dark. The flight dispatcher was on the phone with the Jaipur weather office. Here's a quote from the report. 
On observing that visibility at Jaipur started deteriorating at 1430 UTC, the flight dispatch checked with Jaipur MET office who confirmed that visibility might go down further. At this stage, flight dispatch asked the pilot in command to divert to Jaipur. End quote. They were like, yeah, the weather at Jaipur is getting worse, but it's within minimal right now, and it's only a short 28-minute flight there. So we're betting that the weather would not get worse as the plane flew to Jaipur. But their gamble fell through. The weather did get worse. The sad thing is that Lucknow had great weather. The visibility at Lucknow was 2,000 meters or 6,500 feet. And it had the tag, no SIG which meant that there would be no significant changes to the weather for the next two hours. But transporting the plane back to Delhi or the passengers via road would be much more easy from Jaipur, hence the whole gamble with Jaipur. Then the Air India plane crashed to Jaipur, which really threw a wrench in the works for the pilots of the Spice Jet plane. That is something so out of left field that no one could have predicted that. But that's what happened. And that plane blocked the single runway at Jaipur, taking it out of the equation. This accident could have been so much more worse. I still cannot believe that at the point of engine shutdown, they only had 150 kilos or about 300 pounds of fuel left. A go-around could have easily eaten that up, leaving the plane stranded over Delhi with no fuel in very bad weather. Three things stopped this from being an outright disaster. 1. They decided to divert before they hit their minimum diversion fuel level. This meant that they had a bit more fuel to work with when they made their way back to Delhi, after Jaipur was made non-viable. 2. Their hasty and quick landing. Lastly, the captain's decision to add extra 300 kilos of fuel before taking off from Goa. That, in my opinion, probably single-handedly saved the lives of the 182 people on board. The pilots on this incident did an absolute fantastic job, but they were let down by the operations team on the ground. What do you think is the main reason that this did not end in tragedy? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, I have another video of a very similar accident taking place in India of Jet Airways Flight 555. I also have another video very much like this one happening over Germany. You can find the links to both videos on your screen right now and in the description. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.